God does not lie in the Bible. Lying requires deception and malice. God is not a God of deception, nor is God malicious. Instead, what God does in these passages is God accommodates. He comes down to the level of ancient peoples and uses their understanding to reveal who he is. This is known as the notion of accommodation. Let me give you a more precise definition of biblical accommodation, which, by the way, is a very common principle in reading the scriptures used by theologians every day. Biblical accommodation, this is the notion that the Holy Spirit descended to the level of ancient humans and used their ideas, in this case, ancient science, the best science of the day, in order to reveal messages of faith. So what is God doing here? God is coming down to their level in order to communicate as effectively as possible. Another way of looking at this, the ancient science is like a vessel that contains wonderful messages of faith, which in the case of the creation account in Genesis 1, is that God created the world and that humans are created in the image of God. It is those messages of faith that change people's lives. Now, some Christians are concerned with regards to the notion of accommodation, and they suggest that this waters down the Bible or waters down the gospel. But let me suggest to you a number of examples that actually support the notion of accommodation. Firstly, the Incarnation is your classic example of accommodation, whereby the God of the universe takes on human flesh. In other words, comes down to the level of humans to become a person just like us. Another example, the teachings of Jesus. We saw earlier in the presentation, Jesus using the ancient scientific notion of the ends of the earth, whereby the Queen of Sheba came from the ends of the earth to go all the way to meet Solomon in Israel. Another example is Matthew 13, where Jesus says that the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. Well, of course, we today know that orchids are much, much smaller. But what was Jesus doing? He was accommodating to his audience in the ancient Near East because that's what they thought was the smallest of all seeds. Another example is personal prayer for those of you who are religious. When God speaks to you, does God not come down to your level and use your ideas, your intellectual categories to communicate with you? And I know what the answer is. It's yes. And finally, it's a teaching technique that all of us use. For example, when the little four-year-old comes up to us and says, where do babies come from, mommy and daddy? Do we tell them all the facts of the sexual act? No. What we do is we crouch down to their level and we say that when mommies and daddies love one another, God gives us a special gift, and that special gift is you. In other words, we accommodate to their level. So no, I don't think accommodation is a problem. Actually, we've got a lot of theological and biblical support for the notion of accommodation. God, by definition, has to accommodate to come down to our level. Now that we know the structure of the universe is a three-tier universe in the ancient world, we can talk about its creation as presented in the first chapter of the Bible, Genesis 1 creation account. On the first day, God creates light. On the second day, God creates a firmament, a hard, firm surface to separate the waters above from waters below. On day three, God separates dry land from water. And on the fourth day, 
God places the sun, moon, and stars in the firmament. Well, we can ask the question again. Is scientific concordism true? And I think you know the answer. No, it's not because the universe is not a three-tier universe. In other words, what we find in the biblical text, the creation account, is an ancient understanding of the creation of the world. And this ancient understanding of origins is known as de novo creation. De novo was Latin for brand new. It's creation that is brand new. More specifically, it is the quick and complete origin of the universe and life. In other words, things are made quickly and fully formed. De novo creation is the origins science of the day in the ancient world. In particular, it is an ancient origin science. In other words, this is the best understanding of origins for ancient peoples. Well, what are we going to do with this ancient science that we find within the biblical text? Let me suggest that we use what is called the message incident principle. And the message incident principle simply states that what we find in scripture is this wonderful message of faith which bears the inerrant theology, the deep spiritual truths, and that it is carried by an incidental ancient science that acts like a vessel to carry this message. So when it comes to the creation account in Genesis 1, the message of faith is that God created the heavens and the earth, and that the Holy Spirit came down to the level of the ancient Hebrews and used their understanding of the world and how it came about, which in this case was the de novo creation of the three-tier universe. And so what we can do as we read an ancient text is that we separate the message from the ancient science. We've been talking about the structure and creation of the heavens and the earth so far in this presentation. Take your handout and flip to the second page. Let's now talk about the biology in the Bible. We've been talking about the astronomy, We've been talking about the geology. Let's talk about living organisms. There is a very significant implication with regards to the presence of the three-tier universe in the Bible. Let me explain. If the astronomy in the Bible is ancient, and if the geology in scripture is ancient, that is, if the structure of the earth is an ancient understanding in the Bible, then there's a significant question that can be asked. Then, what other science in the Bible is ancient? And I'm pretty sure you know where I'm going. 